I've seen comments where people claim that elegance is inauthentic behavior and that this kind of content is steering people off from being their authentic selves. Why is authenticity always portrayed like this, but elegance is always portrayed as if it's always inauthentic? Like we have seen a rise in negative behaviors, in bad habits, and people who just, you know, stop looking after themselves because they really do believe that they're just being themselves. Now, I have noticed that people they tend to claim that elegance is something very inauthentic, that it's impossible to be yourself as an elegant person. Full stop. Now, by the end of today's video, you're actually going to find out that this is a very narrow-minded way of thinking, and you're going to learn how it actually works to be elegant while being yourself. Now, before I tell you how to be authentic and elegant at the same time, I must give you some important context. You see, most people who are unfamiliar with elegance, they usually think of it in stereotypical terms, which has to do with, you know, appearance, manners, and they oftentimes also associate elegance negatively. They think it's just some snobbery, inauthenticity, and just simply, you know, rich people mannerism. So people tend to use elegance in two ways. One is using it as a subculture or an aesthetic, like with aesthetic trends on TikTok. But for many people, it goes way beyond an aesthetic and actually carries a deeper meaning. Like you will have a lot of people using it as a tool for personal growth because the values are very much aligned and represents their own. You can really use it in whatever way it suits you. The problem is not everybody understands that. They think it's just a copy and paste formula and let's all just just become clones of each other. Now, I do actually want to use today's sponsor, Lily Silk. As you can see, I'm wearing here. I've worn their striped shirts before, but today I really need to show you some new amazing items that are so worth investing in right now, because with Lily Silk, you always get functionality together with elegance. So first we have this versatile cashmere top, and it is so perfect for spring. Actually, their quality of cashmere is similar to Laura Piana. And this one is crafted from 100% cashmere and available in different colors. And it just looks so expensive yet it comes at a very affordable price. Now you can pair this top together with this black skirt or suit trousers. I personally love, love, love these trousers. They do have a mid-rise cut, which I find so comfortable and also side pockets. But the thing is that these are the type of trousers that you can easily wear every day, but they look so elevated and you could also wear them at formal occasions. Love these trousers. Right now I'm doing collaboration with them. That means that if you go to their website, links are in the description box below, you're going to be able to enjoy 20% discount with my code ANNABAY20. You honestly do not want to miss this one. Now we got to talk about authenticity too, but what does it really mean to be authentic? Because if we do a quick Google search, we can learn that to become our authentic selves is to be who we really are deep down. Okay, but who are we really? Like, I'm serious. It's such a deep statement that, you know, philosophers have spent thousands of years trying to find an answer to this question. The reason why it is so difficult to pinpoint this kind of definite answer is because we're all kind of born as, you know, neutral canvases. And then depending on your life circumstances, you know, where we live, how we're raised, what people we met, you know, what books we've read and where we studied, etc. We all just kind of get filled with thoughts and opinions that actually originally weren't really our own. Like they might become our own, like we might adopt them and they might become aligned with our values and beliefs. But originally, these are not your opinions. You just adopted them. So who are you really? Then, of course, there's more to authenticity. Like, there is this idea that we should let go of who we think we're supposed to be and then just embrace who we truly are. And you know that that kind of authenticity really does require you to have courage to be imperfect, to set boundaries, to do self-acceptance, and also to really allow yourself to be vulnerable. And I'm not against authenticity at all. I want you to know that, like, the more authenticity, the better. I'm just trying to make a very important point right now. Because did you just hear what I heard? Courage to be imperfect, set boundaries, self-acceptance, vulnerability. How many people like that in your life do you actually know? I'm sure somebody, but far from everybody. 
And guess why? Because it's freaking hard to be 100% authentic. Like, since when did vulnerability become, you know, this easy thing that everybody should have naturally? Like, you need a lot of inner strength and courage and have done some inner work for that to happen. It's so easy to just, you know, throw these phrases around, you know, like, oh, girl, just be yourself, like, be who you truly are. But what about if you generally don't have a clue who you truly are, or you don't have the courage that is needed to just, you know, let go and relax and let your authentic self be seen? It's not that easy for everyone. But everybody talks as if it's the easiest and most natural thing in the world. Now, if we just go back to elegance and how it has been critiqued to breed inauthenticity, I'm not going to lie and tell you that, oh, nobody, nobody in my elegance community practices elegance in an inauthentic way. I mean, of course it happens. Like, of course, there will be people who watch my videos, they use these tips as coping mechanism for their insecurities or to feel validated or maybe for some other unhealthy habits. It is hard to be yourself. And maybe these people are at a stage in life where it's really difficult for them to be authentic. You know, maybe they don't even have the inner resources that give them the support that's needed to be authentic. And they're just doing the best they can with what they've got. The goal is obviously not to be in a coping state forever, but it can only happen once you strengthen your self-esteem and confidence and you do the inner work that's required. I also think there's one more detail that is very important in this conversation. And actually, it's really Carl Jung who has spoken about the different personas. Everyone has got a persona which acts in a way like a social mask or you can even call it a facade, to be honest. But every individual has got one because we use it to interact with the world around us. And honestly, we actually need the social mask because we wouldn't really be able to coexist with each other if we didn't have the social mask. Imagine a world where everyone is completely uninhibited and just did whatever they wanted and acted in bizarre ways and simply just driven by their impulses. And also, like, we have a big brain for a reason. And that brain actually allows us to self-regulate, which is not only necessary, but that is what Carl Jung says the persona is all about. So those people who are really advocating for authenticity and strongly against elegance as a result, I think they just assume that all elegant people just over-identificate with their elegance persona. And Carl Jung does speak of the risk of over-identification when there is this kind of, you know, excessive focus on the public persona while neglecting the other parts of self. And this is actually very important to pay attention to because I am aware that some people can easily take it into extremes. Then yes, there is a risk for over-identification and one must, must, must have a balanced approach. Now you're probably able to see that, you know what, being authentic is actually not as straightforward as it may sound, that it is rather complex and that we actually do need personas to function in our society. It's not all black and white, you see, there's a lot of nuance in the middle. Regardless of that, you can still be 100% authentically yourself. Now let me tell you how. First and foremost, you must be aware of your personas and the different roles that you naturally step into. Like you're not gonna be exactly the same person when you are in your work role or when you are with your children or when you're intimate with your spouse, I hope not at least. Like different situations require different versions of you and that's totally normal. What you need to think about is, do these different versions of myself carry a red thread or are they completely different people? That man's an imposter. That man is the imposter. Now, if the answer is the latter, then yeah, maybe you need to think about whether you are embodying, you know, external expectations of who you're supposed to be versus who you truly are. And you know, authentic behavior really does require you to be honest with yourself and really allow yourself to be imperfect. Elegance does often get mistaken with perfectionism. And even though I do think that some perfectionists do get drawn to elegance, you know, what can you do? Elegance is not an excuse to become, you know, 
Little Miss Perfect. Like there's nothing interesting about Little Miss Perfect and it's really an authenticity killer. If you want to start your authenticity journey, you really need to start practice getting comfortable with being imperfect. And listen, I know that it may sound scary, but let me tell you, because I have been showing my imperfections over the years and I have really learned one important detail that you must know, because guess what happens when you show yourself as imperfect? Nothing, nothing bad happens. Nothing falls apart and you know what? Life just goes on. It's all good. It is okay to be imperfect because we all are. If you really feel uncomfortable with this idea, you probably need to do some self-discovery in why you feel uncomfortable. Now, if you feel a little bit stuck on that chapter, then try to do some work with a therapist because they can really guide you deeper and help you uncover where that stems from. Now, what bugs me the most is when people think in extremes and believe that just because we accept our imperfections, we should now lead with like all our bad habits. And this actually brings me back to the importance of values. I think it is important to really reflect what's true to you. Maybe you feel like neglecting your appearance where you don't wash for five days and when you act rowdy and inappropriate is you being authentic and imperfect then okay, that's your values. So just to add to that, because if you have also had trauma in your life, then certain behaviors can be linked to your trauma response and not at all be aligned with who you truly are. Think about that some of these bad habits may actually be traits that you have picked up externally from someone or somewhere that have nothing to do with your authentic self. Let's say one of your parents who raised you was always swearing and being nasty and negative in their speech. And then today you're doing the exact same thing while thinking that you are just being yourself. And if you continue with this behavior without any form of self-awareness, you're actually not staying true to yourself. You're just repeating someone else's bad habits and then thinking that that is what it means to be yourself. To find yourself, you must identify your values and what feels right for you. As an example, for somebody, swearing might feel very right and is who they truly are. And for other people, that might not sit right with them at all. Both are right. But it is so important to identify what is truly you and what is just a bad habit that you have adopted. Then we also have setting boundaries and being vulnerable. And these two are really strong traits of authentic behavior. And I would also say that, you know what? This has always been part of elegance too. Because when you set boundaries, you communicate respect, not only to your surroundings, but also to yourself. And that actually leads to you showing yourself that you have high standards. And there's nothing inauthentic about that. That is the key to elegance. And same goes for vulnerability and how it signals kindness towards yourself and towards others. All are very elegant traits. Now, what I do think is really, really important as you lead with elegance and authenticity is not to fall for any cliches or stereotypes. Now, if you just copy and paste an elegant persona onto yourself without thinking about it or tweaking or mixing it out with your own personality traits, then yes, you are going to practice inauthentic elegance. But if you use it as a personal development tool where you simply use what's aligned with your taste, with your values, while leaving space for your imperfections, for your vulnerability, and for self-acceptance, you're actually going to see that the real you will start emerge because you are simply comfortable with having your authentic self be seen. And you know, you can do all of that while you are incorporating a part of you who also enjoys a specific aesthetic or a set of values or a type of mannerism. I truly believe that whatever you do will either be authentic or fake depending on the reasons behind. Like if you do something just because you think that's expected of you, but you're not really aligned with that whatsoever, then yes, that would be inauthentic. But if you do something because you truly desire it for perfectly healthy and normal reasons, then yes, that can be part of your authentic self. Having said this, if you do enjoy, you know, a classy approach to life, however, with balance and with authenticity, then make sure you subscribe. And also make sure you go check out Lily Silk and all these beautiful garments that they have. Honestly, I wouldn't recommend it to you if I truly did not believe in them.
If you want to continue to learn from me, then make sure you hop on over to my other videos on elegance and having a classy approach in life. You're going to learn loads that is definitely going to help you elevate in life. I will see you in those videos.